All right. Well, good afternoon. I'm here with Lucy. We're not saying Louisiana. Lucy Kreutz and Alex DeBranco of Quaker Oaths. Thank you both for taking a few minutes with Stay Lake Film News. I know that you are busy here at AFF. Got a world premiere. Yeah, we're so happy to be here. Mm -hmm. Exciting day for us. So tell us a little bit about this premiere, about Quaker Oaths, your film, Miss Writer Director. Well, yeah, this film is based on a joke that my friends and I had mm -hmm. about six years ago. We went to an actual um, Quaker wedding, and we were staying in line to sign the marriage certificate, which is what all the guests really do, sure. do um, at these weddings. And we were just joking, well, like, what happens if they get divorced? Would we have to cross off our names? And we started like joking about that, and they were like, oh, that sounds like a romantic comedy. And so we were joking about like, oh yeah, it'd be like Paul Rudd and Jennifer Aniston, and we'd have, <laughs> it would be called Quaker Oaths, and we were all laughing. And then like years went by, and we kept joking about it, like it kept coming up. And then, um, and then at the end, I just, at some point I thought, I'm actually gonna make that movie. It stuck with me, this little premise, so. Now we have a whole movie about this. <laughs> That's an awesome story until your friends come back and they'll be like, you owe us royalties yeah. and we expect yeah. executive producer credits and everything along those lines. Yeah, I got a text this morning from the couple who I've kept in touch with from oh, the really? wedding. And he said, good, uh, congratulations on your big film about our joke, or about our joke divorce, something like that. Oh gosh. <laughs> but yeah, he might ask for some royalties at some point. Yeah, well, so luckily you're like, hey, this is a joke, not a prophecy. I'm sure you guys are doing you're so happy. <laughs> exactly. All right, so coming off a joke, I mean, you hear about scripts that are based on personal experience, um, you know, either a specific event or a specific relationship, but how do you go along taking any element of your life and start making it into, like, where does it kind of gain a life of its own, if that makes sense? Yeah, that's a good question. I think, um, it was pretty fun. It's a pretty fun process, and I don't really know the answer. I think it just, you know, thinking of it as, as like a story where you have you start off with one, with like the first plot point, and then you think about what. And this is a pretty obvious like plot driven movie. Sure. So it's not like, I'm not having someone just wander around aimlessly. It's like these people. It's a plot driven thing, and this couple's going around to get all the people who came to their wedding to cross off their signatures. So it's mm -hmm. a road trip movie. So really it was like I made one draft really fast and just wrote it out and then it changed like 100% from that over the course of a year. And then I got the fun of um, getting to have auditions and getting to meet Alex who brought a lot of life to, to the character of Joe and all of a sudden he was a real person. And mm -hmm. so the, that was all very fun to get that, get that rolling. Yeah, I was gonna ask if you guys knew each other previously, but it was a totally organic, hey, I'm having an audition. <clears throat> yeah, we did not know each other. Uh, we have a mutual friend who's helping cast, and I used to live in Austin, but where we made the movie, but I lived in LA. I live in LA now, and I was just back for something else, I think another shoot, just coincidentally when auditions were happening, and David was like, come to Lucy's house, audition, and I loved the idea, I loved the script, and I was like, of course, I'd love to. And I came, and we had a lot of fun, and we improvised a lot, which I like a lot more than like doing lines at an audition, because it's just way less straightforward stressful and a lot more fun and yeah out of that you know we she decided to cast me which was awesome now did your actors kind of carry that spirit of improvisation over to shooting yeah 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 I think it was always like let's get the lines let's get what we need and then Lucy just kind of let us riff which was really fun and, and mm -hmm. I think a lot of good stuff came out of that yeah that's awesome okay so I mean, obviously, you know a lot more about this industry than I do, but I do know that most writers don't get to direct their own material, and you're kind of handing off your brainchild, your baby, and then crossing your fingers. So when you are getting to direct your own work, do you think you feel you know, more defensive of it, kind of like, no, I got this here, and I'm, you know, I know my own work, or is it kind of going with the spirit of improv and saying like, wait, now that I see it, this this isn't working. Yeah, definitely. I I think I was pretty open to new ideas because really the whole time, as I said, this idea was even made with a group of friends. I'm not even sure who had the idea at first, like mm -hmm. in retrospect. But so all along we were having script readings with friends coming over, people suggesting things. Like my boyfriend thought of a bunch of lines that ended up in the final script. 
So it was very like community driven. Like the, it was not just me writing it the whole time. Mm-hmm. So I didn't feel super protective of it. I'm sure I, I, I do have like strong opinions. So I'm sure that there were moments where I was like, no, I don't like that. But it wasn't like this body of work is, or this piece of work is my vision. It was mm-hmm. more like, well, let's see what happens. Yeah. I, 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 I think, yeah, it was amazing that like, it, it felt like Lucy had very little like ego about the whole thing, you know, like, like any time if we had a, an, a, something that was better than, you know, what we were doing, or she would just allow it to all naturally flow. There was never like, you know, no, this is what we have to do because this is what was in the script or this is what I need. You know, it was always very fluid and organic and that, that kind of culture kind of bred this like, uh, mindset of oh everybody can be part of this you know as mm-hmm. opposed to like one person one viewpoint and I think it, it made for a really strong piece because of that now as an actor because she brought that <coughs> flexibility that spirit of improv did you I mean did that help you as an actor like seeing your character evolve in front of you yeah yeah I, I think I think over the course of the movie, even up to like the very last kind of huge important scene, like I kept figuring out who he was, you know, kind of as he did, weirdly, like mm-hmm. he has to figure out some stuff during the course of the movie. And, and we shot like pretty much chronologically and, and almost mostly. And, and as a result of that, like stuff towards the end of the movie, I started realizing about who Joe was that as he kind of finally was about to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And I think that that happened because we were very like, let's just go for this ride. You know, it's not all like pre-planned and pre-figured out. Or maybe it was in her head. Mm -hmm. But but for us, we we were able to organically figure it out, which was cool. And I haven't, that that doesn't always happen. Now, did you get the chance to rehearse beforehand? Or was it really like, here we are, here's the camera, here's the lights, let's do this? We rehearsed some, I think. Yeah, we had yeah. sessions of rehearsing. We had like hangout sessions, yeah, remember? Yeah, we pizza. Yeah, the, we, the main actress who's excellent, um, Fede, uh, she came over, we all hung out. And we would actually, they would, we would do basically like, we were figuring out about the story and about mm-hmm. um, like where things were going to go. It was, pr- yeah, it was that open that we were kind of talking about these issues they had and yeah. working together. Just so living it, in their reality, not necessarily like rehearse every scene but just like who are these two what are they all about and then you you don't you you don't bring that stuff into the scenes that you shoot on a cognitive level but it's like deep in you you know and you're like oh i get this dude now and and that's the stuff that like the heart of him i I had because of that work that we did Mm -hmm. yeah I like how you talk about we had hangout rehearsals. It almost sounds like you kind of recreated the original context of the joke where yeah. you were just with friends, casual setting, yeah. able to let these things sprout up. Yeah, the whole thing was very friendly, I would say, overall. Like, every, everything was about, like, the crew was friends with each other. Like, Alex was staying with my cousin at one point. It, was, it felt very, like, yeah, very personal, I would say. Friends, yeah, friends very friends informal. Friends. Yeah, that's what it felt like. Yeah. All right, so, well, first of all, have you gotten all the cast and crew to come in for the premiere? Yeah, I think, I mean, most people are here. Alex flew in from L.A., and Fede lives here in Austin. Um, I do think that everyone else, yeah, there, there's two screenings, so we're going to have some people here today and then some people here on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. So it's very exciting to have everyone all is together. It, is it almost surreal when you talk, I mean, to me, it, I imagine myself like, okay, if I made this joke with my friends and it was just kind of this running joke between me and my two buddies and then we kind of made a script about it because that could be funny and then all of a sudden you've got a world premiere label stamped on it and here we are and we're in front of a camera (laughs) and there's going to be a red carpet and there are people coming. What is that journey Yeah, it is exciting. It's so exciting. I mean, actually just today when I went to go do the sound check, the guy that was... And by the theater said he saw it ahead of time. He got a screener of it and he was like, oh, I loved it. And I, he was talking about the plot. I was like, oh, what a funny thing to think the people besides my friends are going to see this movie. That's my main mm-hmm. feeling of the day. It's like, there's going to be people I don't know that are going to see the movie. Mm-hmm. That's like such an exciting idea to me. I was waiting for you to say like, he'd seen it beforehand and explained the plot and brought out all of these things that we had not intended. <laughs> and that might happen today. Yeah, maybe there'll be some people might analyze it as a darker film or something, <laughs> you don't know. 
Alex, you that was a wicked laugh right there. Yeah. <laughs> a darker film. <laughs> 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 uh, so that makes me worry a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Lucy may be in for a surprise today. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> All right. Well, let's talk a little bit more about you as a writer director. Have you ever directed your own material before? That's that's my first question. So I'm gonna run. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Thank okay. you so yeah. much for having me. Sorry, I ended on your evil laugh it's note. Okay. <laughs> he seems like a great me. guy for the record. <laughs> Alex is one of the nicest, like most fun people to work with oh, ever. Thank you. He like brought the movie to life. Thank you. I just want to say I'm about Lucy. No, See no. Our movie. Okay. okay. <laughs> right. Thanks, Alex. Um I have done mostly documentary work before, mm -hmm. and almost all, like since film school, I haven't really done a narrative. So really, I've done a lot of like smaller doc independent documentaries and reality TV and, and documentaries for TV, for TV. So really, this was like so like different from anything else I've done. So I've directed before, but just not a narrative. Mm -hmm. And it's like a totally different ball game. It doesn't even feel like the same industry. It's, mm -hmm. it's so different. I was chatting to Johnny O'Hara yesterday about the role of the screenwriter in documentary films. Yeah. And uh, I think to people who are not very familiar with the terminology of film production, they kind of say, a screenwriter for a documentary? A screenwriter for reality TV? That, oh, yeah. You don't need one of those, right? Do you? So how did your experience in the documentary world, in the reality TV world, kind of inform your choices as a director? Um, I don't know how much it did. I know that um, it definitely gave me the confidence to direct because I've spent a lot of time like being in charge of crews and having to like, you know, work on a small budget and wrangle people. So I felt in that way, I felt prepared. But really, I felt pretty like green the whole time I was doing quick growths. I like our cinematographer EJ Enriquez really had to like carry a lot of the weight of actual filmmaking. It was just he was the one he was the pro on the set, and I had I was good with the actors, but I, it was definitely a new world to me to like have to plan out shots ahead of time and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. That felt very different. So I'm not sure how much it prepared me. Yeah. Maybe it didn't. Well, tell me a little bit more about your cinematographer. Did you meet like you did with Alex? It was just kind of you did a crew call or had you been friends previously? Yeah, I, I've worked with him a bunch and he's kind of like a young, like, um, you know, someone I'm right at the right, especially two years ago, like right at the cusp of getting too, too, um, like, I guess too hot to even consider working on a small film like mine. So mm -hmm. I got him like right before that was a nice thing. Um, but he, yeah, we'd worked on a couple of music videos together. We worked on a short film. So I, I knew about him and he's super nice and, and like flexible. And he was worked on a very low budget with very few lights and made it look really good. Mm -hmm. So I was very lucky to have EJ. Yeah. Did you have that relationship with other crew members, you know, your editor and your producers? Yeah. I mean, I edited the film myself, so I have that relationship. And then my producer, Bradley Beasley, and I have worked together over the last almost 10 years now on a ton of projects, mm -hmm. all of them like documentary and reality TV up until now um, and then the other producer Austin Tolan and I worked on reality TV together so everyone everyone on this crew or people I'd worked with before mm -hmm. um, including like my cousin was the boom operator because she's like super buff and has like the one chiseled. that Alex was staying with yeah she has like chiseled arms and so she I was like you're gonna be a great boom operator and sure enough she held it up there <laughs> forever so my cousin was the boom operator. My friend, who's a bike messenger, was the gaffer. It was like a real, like a bartender was the sound mixer. Like we had a very eclectic group of people on this making That's the film. Awesome. Yeah. I love that. So you said that you felt green the whole time. You, you felt inexperienced. How important was it for you to have that base of support, you know, those friendships, those uh, work colleagues around you? Um, it was great. Well, also, yeah, they, I would never felt um, like it was a nice, you know, support system. So I didn't mm -hmm. have to feel like I was doing it alone or anything. It mm -hmm. felt like a family friend production. Yeah. Yeah. Now we have um, a couple of other female writer directors have come to the festival. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we talked to Robin Swicourt the other night. How, and I don't even know how to frame this question in my head, but I'm always interested to hear more about the journey of a female director, like some of the obstacles that you've come up against in your career and how you have moved past those to, you know, forge professional relationships that you enjoy and that you're nourished by? Yeah, I don't know. I, I 
been asked that before. I don't really have any specific hurdles I feel like I've had because I'm a woman. I haven't really experienced that. Or if I have, I haven't noticed. Or I take, take it more about my own personality than being a mm-hmm. woman, I would say. Um, but I would, one thing that I, I've heard, like, um, I think uh, Quentin Tarantino's editor said this, that like an editor is often a f- like the the most famous like editing d- director pairs. It's the woman is the editor, mm-hmm. and I think that's kind of a cool thing. They say that it's just like women are are better at dealing with men's personalities and can and don't get their ego involved as quickly. Like whereas guys might mash up together. Mm-hmm. So maybe that's the one thing I would say is that I do feel like in some ways it's worked to my advantage. Like get my foot in the door. I started out editing and I felt like I. I'm this kind of a strange answer actually but yeah I think that that has I understand that dynamic and I appreciate that that I was able to use that to my advantage Mm -hmm. (laughs) so would you say a lot of your confidence comes from your prior experience that you really have played a lot of different facets of this game you're not just a writer you're not just a director right yeah no I feel pretty confident in that just I've worked on so many productions that I've I feel confident in that and I feel confident um, running a crew. I feel less confident about like the filmmaking part of it, you know, like the mm-hmm. actual like planning out the cool shots and that kind of thing. But that's a fun challenge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Out of curiosity, have you ever directed for stage? Yeah. I wondered. I was like, yeah, because uh, she's definitely directed, but she says she hasn't planned shots. So she's. Yeah, exactly. Actually, my friends and I, the same friends from the wedding, right around the same time, probably, we did a play in the park of. I just wanted to do a play. It was like I was editing all the time. I wanted to do something like outside mm-hmm. with my friends that was like active. So we did a play in the park of the Princess Bride. Oh man. We didn't we just like a rogue production, like we didn't get licensing, we didn't get permits. We just nice. did it in the park. Gorilla style. And, yeah, gorilla theater and like five hundred people came, people went nuts. I love and then it. next year we did Ghostbusters, again the same style. So I did those plays. So that was directing, but yeah, without the planning of the shots, which I guess mm-hmm. is my weakness, maybe. Those friends are definitely going to be requesting royalties at some point. Maybe, yeah. Well, I don't know. We've, I've set up this non royalty establishment, oh. or, you know? <laughs> so we'll see. Did any of them help out with the movie? Yeah, they, they all make cameos. A couple of, like, some of the. Um, like the secondary characters are those people. And actually my boyfriend who was in the plays as pretty big parts, he's one of, he's like the third biggest part in this movie. Mm-hmm. So, okay, so we haven't really talked specifics about the movie so yeah. far. Um, like you said, it's a road trip movie, kind of a romantic comedy turned on its head mm-hmm. a little bit. So tell me a little bit more about your female lead and obviously we don't have her with us, but um, her interactions with Alex and kind of the journey that they took together. Yeah, Fede Rangel is awesome. She, um, she plays the role of Emily and both of their characters, they're, they're both like very nice the whole movie. I didn't want to make a t- movie where people are getting divorced, they're just like fighting the whole time. Sure. So they're like tragically nice to each other, the whole process of the movie. Mm-hmm. And they both get their feelings hurt and they both, like they don't talk about it. So their relationship is really like, their, their issue is like communication. And so you see that play out throughout the whole movie. Mm-hmm. And um, she's just like a down to earth, likable person. She's, she like wants to be nice to everyone and she wants to be good, but she ends up kind of being her own worst enemy in some ways. Mm-hmm. Did your feelings towards your own characters change through the production process? Maybe a little. I mean, once they were cast and they were these people, they were these actors, that was fun to see them like come to life. And I think they did, did have a little more dimension than I, than I had in my mind. It was, it was really fun to see them come mm-hmm. to life. It's cool to hear Alex talk about the improv because I'm having flashbacks to acting school when I was in my early 20s. And I had this amazing movement coach. He was such a great guy. And I really, really really struggled in his class because you know his style was like Carrie just get up there we just want to see you work don't try to control it don't worry how you're going to get from one spot to the next and one line from the next you know just go with it and see what happens Mm -hmm. I had a really hard time like releasing enough to let that happen so I'm interested in how you and your actors went through that because You know, I was so paranoid about, well, I'm not going to like the end result. I have to control the end result. Oh, yeah. Well, I guess just the magic of having as many takes as you want. Like, we're not shooting a film. It's true. So, like, 
there were some things I didn't like and I was like you guys just keep doing that and then we'll get one where you don't do that and if you know like I'll, mm -hmm. I'll settle, I knew I was going to edit it so I didn't ever had to worry too much about if I really didn't like something they were doing it was okay mm -hmm. um, but really I mean like even from the one of the first auditions Alex had Alex and Fede had this little joke that was so funny in the audition they just made up on the spot and then that I ended up writing it into the script like so I basically stole material from their own audition and put it in the movie <laughs> But I'm so I'm so happy to have like fresh perspective and new ideas on for jokes and for not like plot points but for jokes and that kind of thing. It was mm -hmm. really helpful to have improv. Is that what you mean? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Was there any? Uh, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I know you have things to do today. But was there any of your supporting characters? You know, the stops that they make along the trip yeah. that really stood out to you that you're like, oh man, if I would shoot that ten times over, if we could. Oh, you mean that didn't go well? No, I mean, like, you liked it so much that you're like, I don't care um, how hard it was, I would go through all of that again. Yeah, well, the first one that comes to mind was just the first stop they make, um, which is, like, supposed to be this elderly couple that are also Quakers. And my boyfriend thought of this joke, like, a year before I even shot it, when I first started the script of them, you know, they're talking to the to this old lady, this their, like, great aunt. And she's saying, oh, well, how could you get divorced? No, you guys are so good together. And, and then her husband comes in. He's like, you'll never do it. Like, we've been trying to get ours crossed off for 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like the little, like, you know, warning trolls at the beginning of a, like, long quest or something. Right. Anyway, they, this couple was so good. And we just, like Alex said, oh, I know someone who knows someone who knows an acting older couple. And so uh, they came down from Dallas. I'd never even met them. And they drove down from Dallas to be in the film. They're a real life married couple. They have like 20 kids, something crazy where I don't know. Wow. I, you're like, was it really you're 20? You're like, are you for real? Yeah. Um, but so they have all these kids, all these grandkids, grand, great grandchildren. They're in their 80s. And he's in like Dumb and Dumber Part 2. Oh, man. And she's on some show on the CW about witches. Like they're just, they're like movers and shakers. Mm -hmm. They're like amazing people. And they were so good. Like watching them perform these lines that was one of the first scenes we ever wrote mm -hmm. it was like damn these guys are good it felt so like this is what it's supposed to be I just called someone and these people drove down and now it's perfect so that's one of my favorite scenes to watch is that scene with those people that's awesome Grant James and Julie Erickson they have names I remember I know Julie Erickson you? yes she's amazing I yeah. love her yeah so you can imagine how happy I was when she showed up and she'd like done her hair in this cute little braid style and like how she they brought their own costumes that were like spot on mm -hmm. every line they said I was like that is perfect that's so her it was such that's a so home her. run yeah and her sweet husband yes so that felt like well the gods are on my side to get this yes get this all working out so well they want these quakers to get their get yeah. their list taken care yeah, of yeah and they kind of look like quakers <laughs> she looked anyway it was really sweet i love that that all was right. a positive thing well awesome thanks for taking some time with us oh, lucy yeah, I'm and so happy. congratulations on the film and thank on the premiere much. and thank you hopefully we'll see you again down here in austin yeah